Donny van der Beek. It's an argument that Manchester United fans have been having with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, with Ralph Rannick, and the fact that he's not played hardly at all. And now he's been linked with the move to Crystal Palace in January. And in this video, I want to explain exactly why Donny van der Beek needs to be leaving Manchester United in January. I want to explain that in this video. Before I do begin, please consider subscribing to United People's TV. Just go down there, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications bell, get notified every time I go live with some top tier content like this. But let's speak nice and clearly and nice and quickly and precisely about van der Beek to Crystal Palace and why I think it should happen and why... A bit like Anthony Martial to Sevilla, it suits all parties. It suits Manchester United, it suits Donny van der Beek, and it suits Crystal Palace. We saw the news that emerged yesterday from Fabrizio Romano saying that Crystal Palace were asking for Donny van der Beek on loan. It said that Rangnick was reluctant to let him go, and we fast-forwarded to a few hours later that said Crystal Palace have submitted a straight loan proposal for Donny van der Beek. It's now a direct negotiation with Manchester United. And... While I know that we're all frustrated with how Manchester United's midfield has been, the quality of it, the fact that we signed this unbelievable midfielder from Ajax at 23 and 25, two years later, he's hardly played a minute of football. And that's where it has to stop for me. And that's where I've changed because in the summer, I was like, Donny van der Beek, we shouldn't allow him to go out on loan. We should keep him at the club because it suits Manchester United to have a nice, stable, deep squad. Stable might be the wrong word, but depth. But then you look at these stats. These are from United Arena. These are ma which Manchester United players have received the most minutes per game and percentage of starts since the start of last year in the Premier League. And there's no prizes for guessing where Donny van der Beek is on this list. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Right at the bottom of the list. No player has had less starts in the Premier League than Donny van der Beek in terms of the squad. We've massively, massively stunted his growth. And when it comes to low moves, sometimes they can be good, sometimes they can be bad. But when it comes to this move, I think it's perfect for Donny van der Beek. And that's what I mean about suiting all parties. We go over here, look, Palace this season, they're a mid-table team. By comparison of last year when they were scraping away from relegation, Patrick Vieira has come in and done a very good job. And when you look at what Donny van der Beek could do there... You just take a look at their formation and you see where he could slot in. They're playing more of a 4-3-3 quite often. You know, Conor Gallagher has been fantastic this season. Will Hughes, he can go in there for Jeffrey Schlupp. They're playing a less Roy Hodgson style of football because lo and behold, Roy Hodgson is not their manager anymore. And they've got Zaha, they've got Edouard, they've got Eze. They've got some exciting players there. And I think Donny van der Beek could go there and really revitalize his career in the same way that Jesse Lingard did that at West Ham. Now, that didn't really help Lingard overall because Lingard came back to Manchester United and then he was left out by Ragnick. He was left out kind of a lot by Solskjaer as well. Or maybe there were some broken promises. But when it comes to Manchester United, maybe we can see the perfect situation because for Donny van der Beek, there's a big reason why he needs that game time. And that's because he needs to get back into that Holland squad for the Winter World Cup without a loan move to Crystal Palace or anywhere else. Donny's simply not going to get that game time at Manchester United. And I don't want to say... As I said, I've reached a point now where I massively empathize with Van der Beek. In the summer, I was like, no way should we let him go. I want as much strength and depth as possible at United. And now I'm like, rah, like, just let him go and play football. Seriously, you're properly stunting his growth. And something that I found quite exciting, maybe I'm looking into it, you're looking into it as well. We go back to the original tweet from Fabrizio Romano saying, look at the bottom, Manchester United want Donny Van der Beek to be in the team for the start of next season. Why? I have absolutely no idea why that could be. Honestly, I, I can't think of any particular reason why that may be the case, apart from the fact that Eric Ten Hag might be our manager next year. And imagine that. Donny van der Beek goes and has a fantastic three, four month loan, four months, sorry, loan spell at Crystal Palace, plays regular Premier League football, get, gets used to the rigors of it, learns a lot under Patrick Vieira. Obviously, he's not going to turn him into a physical powerhouse, but maybe he can teach him certain parts of his game which are considered weak that's what we've always heard is that no matter how good he has been in training or no matter how good he or impressive he's been that he doesn't have that physical side to his game and I don't know whether that's true or not but that's what we're hearing and imagine that Ten Hag comes in in the summer Donny van der Beek has a new lease of life at Manchester United under the manager that he came through 
with Ajax and was playing inside that team, it could be fantastic. And this, it, the next point I want to make here, and this is why it suits all parties, because everything I've mentioned so far there is all about how this suits Donny van der Beek. Ultimately, I want what's best for Manchester United. And that's where I think this, everything just, the moons are, the moons aligned. The moons are aligned here. And this, lad, is probably why I'm saying that. Hannibal Medjbury has really come on in the last couple of months. Played out in the Arab Cup with Tunisia. I think he got to the final and lost. And now he's in the AFCON quarterfinal, going to play Burkina Faso. The 19-year-old might not be playing in his more traditional central attacking midfield position with Tunisia. I think he's playing out on the left wing. But at 19, he's come on so far. And Man United, remember this as well. We paid 10 million euros to sign Hannibal when he was a 16-year-old. It was only three years ago. It's not as if he's somebody who's come through our academy and we've just had high hopes for him ever since he was a kid. He's someone we spotted as a 16-year-old and said, that's the player we want. Three years later, he's playing regular international football. And Hannibal strikes me as one of those players where if we don't now give him the opportunities, it could be another Pogba situation on our hands. Clearly, he's matured a lot as an individual. And speaking about Paul Pogba, that's another reason why I think this situation will suit Manchester United. Paul Pogba is coming back from his injury. He will be back inside the squad in February. And if, in my opinion... I think that would push Donny van der Beek further down the pecking order. I think he's he's more likely to come in and start alongside Bruno as the second number eight than Donny van der Beek is because the reality is we head back to those stats here from United Arena. Donny van der Beek simply hasn't been played and we've needed players of his quality, but he, for some reason, under two different managers, he hasn't been played. So I don't see how that's going to change between now and the end of the season. And if all of a sudden, at the start of next season, Manchester United can get a player of Donny van der Beek's quality who comes back confident, far more confident of playing in the Premier League, having played for four months in. I'm not saying he's going to play every week, but he's certainly going to get more opportunities there at Crystal Palace than he is at Manchester United. And the fact here that we've got Paul Pogba coming back and Hannibal Medjby coming through, I think if you now take a look at what our squad could look like, you can see how I don't think we'd actually miss Donny van der Beek between now and the end of the season. Hell, we have we've missed him now, but he's not going to play. So we have to consider that he was going to, he would get the same opportunities between now and the end of the season, and that's absolutely nothing. Because if you look here, you've got Bruno and Fred there as the two options for the right sided uh, number eight, and there on the left you've got Popper and you've got Hannibal. Now Hannibal for me would be a player far more happy at this point in his career to sit there and be the understudy to someone else. Van der Beek right now has been the understudy to nobody, really, in midfield for, for the whole season. That's why it's been kind of disrespectful. Um, but Hannibal and Pogba, for me, perfect situation. Because I've always felt, and I've maintained this quite a lot, I've always felt that Donny van der Beek was bought to Manchester United as Paul Pogba's replacement. And I think COVID happened. And then Juve couldn't then uh, afford him uh, because of all the dropped in revenues. They couldn't guarantee their extra revenues. And all football went through a mad couple of years when it comes to the transfer windows. Everybody sort of putting the handbrake on everything. And because of that, Paul Pogba's options were swept away from him. That's why we're in the situation now. We're about to lose him on a free transfer. In my opinion, I think we signed Van der Beek to replace Paul Pogba. And then Paul Pogba never got sold. And all of a sudden, We've got a bloated squad. So in this situation, it might be a case that we see Paul Pogba smashing it for the last three months because he wants to earn a big money move somewhere else. That would suit United because we're going to lose him on a free transfer anyway. So between now and the end of the season, if we get Paul Pogba playing brilliantly and we get into the Champions League or we win the Champions League, we get into the top four because of it, then we benefit from it. So that suits Manchester United. And then he leaves on a free transfer. And what happens? Donny van der Beek maybe comes back from his loan spell at Crystal Palace, having played there for a few months, far more confident, and then starts working under Eric Ten Hag. Woo! Yeah, you can see the moon's aligning. You can see what I'm talking about. But in terms overall of this move, as I said, Crystal Palace, they want him. Crystal Palace have submitted an offer for him. We simply haven't given him enough time or opportunity. And I think Patrick Vieira and Crystal Palace will be a good place for him. If you take a look at the formation that they're using... The 4-3-3, it's there. You can see where Donny would slot into that system. He needs to get back into the Holland squad. The only way he's going to do that is by regular playing time. And maybe he'll go there and then come back and then work under Eric Ten Hag if he becomes our manager. I don't particularly think Manchester United will be too weak in that area. We've got Hannibal who can come back from the AFCON and slot in. We've got Pogba coming back from injury. We look here at the squad overall. 
you can see where Manchester United would have the strength in depth there. I think we'd cope without Donny van der Beek. And for that reason, I think Donny van der Beek deserves this move to Crystal Palace. We need to let him go. We need to let him spread his wings and actually start playing Premier League football. He's still only 25. He's got plenty of years ahead of him, but we can't stunt his growth anymore simply just for the fact that someone might get COVID and then therefore you're going to play him. I don't think it's fair at this stage. Uh, there's been too many broken, not broken promises, but simply just no opportunities. And for me, I want to see Donny van der Beek shine and I think he deserves that chance. He's worked professionally, kept his head down, hasn't come out and chatted shit really like anybody. He had that interview with Rio Ferdinand. You could argue that was a, maybe sort of him trying to prod and poke, but... I think he was just being honest. He wanted to play. And for me, Crystal Palace, I like the sound of it. And for me, it's like Martial to Sevilla. I think it suits all parties. That's my opinion. I want you to let me know what you think about that in the comments below. I'll tell you what, I'm much happier with the lighting in here. I think it looks good. It feels good. I hope you think that the quality of the videos are going up and up here on United People's TV. If you did enjoy it, as I said at the start of the video, please would you consider dropping a like on the video, going down there, subscribing if you are new to United People's TV and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss a video from me. But thank you very much for joining in. Let me know what you think about Donny van der Beek in the comments. Until next time, though, take it easy.